Welcome to the SEC Big 12 Challenge presented by Sonic. Today, the Auburn Tigers pay a visit to Lubbock, Texas to take on the Red Raiders of Texas Tech. Hi, folks. Thanks for joining us. Mike Morgan alongside former Vanderbilt sharpshooter Barry Booker. Great to be with you. It's that time of year. Teams are still gearing up for conference play. That's not too far off. But what better way, Barry Booker, to get ready for conference play than to take on some challenging opponents out of conference? That's the case with the SEC Big 12 Challenge. Yeah, it's a great competition. And both these teams with a lot of young players trying to build their programs playing that stiffer competition. Of course, the coaches like the competition as well, and tonight we feature two of the best around, Bruce Pearl of Auburn and Tubby Smith of Texas Tech. Coach Pearl in his first year at Auburn after a great run at Tennessee, taking the ball to so their deepest run in the NCAA tournament, the Elite Eight, and Tubby Smith, of course, with a national title in his first season at Kentucky in 98. A great career for Tubby Smith in the top 100 all time on the coaches' wins list. Taking a look at the starting five for the Auburn Tigers. They only have eight players on scholarship, but they return a couple of good ones, including KT Harrell, one of the top scorers in the league last year, and a Juco Dynamo in the paint. Remember the name, Simeon Bauer, 6'7", 275. Speaking of big and beefy for Texas Tech, they got a big man of their own, one of the top guys in the Big 12 already as a freshman in Norentz, Odiasi for the Red Raiders of Texas Tech. Also, Devontae Williams getting his first start of the year. He is second in the nation in three-point shooting. 14 of 21 he has made. Those are Barry Booker-like numbers. <laughs> Better shooting for Texas Tech from the perimeter. And uh, I think we're gonna see a very fun matchup, great matchup inside with Odiasi for Texas Tech and Bowers for Auburn. It's kind of a rebuilding term, if you would, a rebuilding year for each of these teams. But with those two coaches, you can feel the excitement surrounding Auburn, surrounding Texas Tech. Tubby Smith has won wherever he has been. Bruce Pearl did a phenomenal job at Tennessee. And when you sit down and talk to Bruce Pearl, you can sense the excitement he has about being back in the SEC, being with Auburn, and taking that program to another level. Both these coaches talk quite a lot about how much they enjoy their teams, how much they like their players, and Coach Pearl three times. I love, love, love my team. <laughs> Auburn and Orange, Texas Tech in black. The Red Raiders have it first. We're underway from the United Supermarkets Arena here in Lubbock, Texas. And those big bodies inside, 32. Odiasi in black and five. Bowers in on. They already got tangled up on the first play. <laughs> Bowers was touching his face with his hand, kind of implying that he got hit. Be watching those two guys all night long. Those two guys are so big, nobody's going to feel sorry for either one of them. <laughs> Foul trouble could be a big factor, especially for Auburn. They don't have very much depth at all on the interior, so they really can't afford Bowers to get any foul trouble. Shot clock at six, shot is blocked. And out of bounds, it will be Texas Tech basketball. The Red Raiders have done a tremendous job blocking shots already this season, averaging over six a game. This is the leadoff game for the SEC Big 12 Challenge. We'll keep an eye on the other games that will actually start tomorrow. This will tip things off the first of 10 games. Last year, the Big 12 won seven of 10. Second chance for the Red Raiders. No, and the Tigers clear it. Nice rebound by Granger. Straight on three. Both teams starting off ice cold. Texas Tech, a much better rebounding team than the Auburn Tigers. That'll be a, a big stat tonight. Who can handle the, the boards? Whoa. There you saw the battle of the beef. Second attempt is good for Odiase. That is over 540 pounds going at one another. And another rejection on the other end. A strong take by Ross Miller into the trees, but this Red Raiders team, tremendous length and tremendous ability to swat shots. And a tremendous postman in or Odiasi inside, battling against Bowers, and just powering through him for the first attempt. Couldn't get that one down, but sticks with it to get the finish and two for Texas Tech. Yeah. 
Red Raiders already have fired off five shots. They've hit one. This is Turner. The big man, Oriase. They want him back in the paint. He'll treat over there. Baseline jumper open. Again, no sale. Both teams want to play fast toward their offensive end of the court. Get up the court quickly, get good shots quickly, or and slow down their opponents. And uh, Texas Tech not able to get out and challenge that three-point shot. That's Jordan Granger. He played last year, but sparingly. He needs to play a lot more this season. Bruce Pearl talking about that young man, how his game has really taken it to the next level. Shooting three-pointers very well, playing that power forward position at about 6'8". We can step out and knock down that three-point shot. Good-looking jumper from Jordan Granger, 25, in orange. Robert Turner sets up the play into a double team. And this is what Auburn and Bruce Pearl do so well. The shot clock went off, really didn't need to, because Auburn had already stolen it and had a run out. And actually hurt the Tigers, taking away potential bucket in transition. Quickness for the Auburn Tigers. KC Ross Miller able to step into the passing lane, knock that ball away. Still kind of a, a loose ball situation, so the officials erring by going ahead and giving Auburn the possession. Three ball on the way and good for Harrell, one of the top shooters in the SEC a year ago. Two baskets are Auburn, two three-point shots. KT Harrell looks so much better from three-point range this year than he did last year, only shooting 27% on the season from three-point range. Now that shot looks really good. Inside, Odeyase too strong. Odeyase again. You see about eight arms surrounding the <laughs> big man. I don't even know how he got that shot off, but he got fouled. Odeyase battling inside. That time there's a... We got Bowers off the court. So Odiase trying to do some work inside, taking advantage of his size advantage down low and getting extra opportunities for the Red Raiders. That's the first foul of the game. It goes on 32. At 31, that's Waddell. Odiase, a 6'9 freshman of Crowley, Texas. A young man who had to lose about 25 pounds to really get into playing shape. When he came to campus, he was over 290. Developed into a very good player, a dominant force on the inside in the Big 12 this year. Ranger tried the fadeaway, nothing but air. Texas Tech doing a really nice job on the backboard so far. I don't think Auburn has an offensive rebound. Texas Tech doubling up Auburn on the backboard so far. Turner got bumped on the drive. And that'll bring us to our first medium timeout. Auburn on top with 15.38 to go. KT Harrell. One of the top scorers in the SEC drains the triple. The SEC Network Basketball is brought to you by Sonic's 399 foot long wind tots. Mike Morgan, Barry Booker with you here in Lubbock, Texas. Auburn Tigers up by a deuce with 15.38 to go in the first half. It is the second annual. SEC Big 12 matchup. The first one took place last year, and the Big 12 took seven out of ten. Auburn Tigers going to rely heavily on the three-point shot, more so than we've seen the last two years, Barry. They really don't have a lot of size. They've got to be able to beat you with some of their guards. No, they got Simeon Bowers inside, who can doing a great job rebounding, uh, second in the country in rebounding at 13 a game. But other than that, not much inside for the Tigers. They are perimeter dominated. KT Harrell leading the way from that standpoint. The Tigers knocking down a couple of three-point shots to get to the 6-4 lead early on. Three, four, five, Bowers gets a breather. 
He's getting a workout by Odiase, who gets it here. Who's going to stop the big man now? Odiase takes it strong and muscles it up the window and in. He's got six points. Rinks or Odiase dominant inside with his rebounding. Texas Tech doing a really nice job keeping him involved, jamming that basketball down inside, forcing a couple of fouls on Auburn early, and Odiase is really into this game. This is Canada. Nice move by Malcolm Canada, senior guard by way of Austin, Texas. Tiger is able to spread the court that last trip. Canada getting into the lane as Texas Tech becoming a little more focused on defending the three-point line. The driving lanes are opening up, opening up for Auburn. There's a steal by Canada out of the hands of Harrell. Back to Canada on a three. And an air ball. And then a foul on Auburn. Now everything for Auburn there was good up to the shot. Watch Odeyase here. Just the pure muscle. And all the attention that he's drawing. The hands of the Auburn Tigers reaching in. All five Tiger defenders down inside that restricted area. But Odeyase still able to power it up and get two for the Red Raiders. And when Bowers is out of the game for Auburn and he's quickly back in now, I mean, Odiase just looks like a man among boys. It's one of the reasons why Bruce Pearl told us we cannot afford to have Simeon Bowers in foul trouble tonight. He does not have a foul so far on the evening, just took an early break. We'll see if, uh, see if that pays off for Auburn, getting Bowers a little rest while Odiase has played the entire way so far. Here we go, beef on beef. Odiase on the floor, no shot, draws the foul on Bowers. Odiase looks possessed tonight. <laughs> well, his teammates are pounding that basketball into him. He has been involved in this game on virtually every offensive trip for the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Odiase got the shot down, but the foul occurred prior to the shot. Fourth team on Auburn, not a single foul yet on Texas Tech. That's going to be foul number five on Auburn. And it's looked like T.J. Lang just shouldered Justin Gray out of bounds. Odiase already six points. He's been the only scorer thus far for the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Going to be a turnover on the inbounds pass. One thing about a Bruce Pearl team, <laughs> Barry Booker, you and I covered a lot of Tennessee games when Bruce Pearl was the coach. They are suffocating on inbounds plays. They make it so hard to throw it in. And Bruce Pearl talks about that being an advantage for his club. He has five defenders on the court to guard four guys. And he convinces his players that that is an opportunity for them. And they do a great job forcing turnovers and five second violations in those out of bounds situations. I think the clock started. Just checking that and we're back in play. That ball went off the foot of Odiase and picked up by a teammate and laid in. Ahead of the pack was Keenan Evans. Heads up play. Simeon Bowers doing a, uh, a point guard imitation there and banging it off the foot of Odiase, allowing Texas Tech to get that easy basket. Not a kick if it's not intentional. And a timeout called by Auburn, Texas Tech's defense causing some havoc. Odiase trying to apply the pressure to Bowers and able to force that turnover just by closely guarding him, and that leads to an easy basket for Texas Tech. Those easy baskets will be precious tonight. Yeah, Bowers just simply dribbled it off the foot of Odiase. A lot of people insist that's a kick. It's not when it's unintentional. Don't forget to catch the top college basketball team of the nation on Sunday on the SEC ESPN Network. It's an in-state showdown as the White Hot number one Wildcats play host to Eastern Kentucky in Rupp Arena, Eastern Kentucky at Kentucky, Sunday at 6 on the SEC ESPN Network. Well, when you talk about Kentucky, 
It is an embarrassment of riches. <laughs> all Americans all over the place. Two platoon teams, the blue and the white. Coach Calipari doesn't call them substitutes. He calls them reinforcements. Reinforcements, and I, I think that second unit led by Tyler Ulis is better than the first unit. Ulis, a special player, a point guard who just creates scoring opportunities for his team. That is an incredible Kentucky team with a great chance to go undefeated this season. And they're doing a great job not talking so much about that. Ross Miller just got it off at the buzzer. Red Raiders clear it. Great defense by Texas Tech. That trip, they forced Auburn to take quite a bit of time off the clock without getting a good scoring opportunity. Then they came out of that timeout unaware of the situation with the shot clock. Inside, Manderson. Ah. Got fouled right on the forearm, bailed him out. That's two now on Bowers. Big trouble for Auburn. And this is the worst nightmare that Bruce Pearl talked about with us. If Bowers gets an early foul trouble, they don't really have another guy that can contend with Odiase. Well, and Odiase has been so dominant in this game, Texas Tech will be in the bonus from here on. They have been to the foul line a, a few times already. In the rest of this half, they'll get those free throw shooting opportunities because of the great work that Odiase has done inside. And also now Simeon Bowers with foul trouble for Auburn. Big advantage for Texas Tech for this next 12 plus minutes of the first half. Taking the goal and a foul called. Strong take. It might have gotten Manderson. He did. Got some ball and some arm. Taj Shamsadeen on the drive to the basket and just got his feet clipped as he was heading in there. Fell very awkwardly. And he will step to the foul line. Shamsadeen last year, starting point guard, playing a lot of two guard this year in Auburn's offense. A 5'9, 170 pound sophomore out of Decatur, Georgia. We'll uh, see Auburn jump into their full court press defense if Shamsadeen is able to knock down this second foul shot. They turn their opponents over on 23% of their possessions. It's amazing what they're able to do with that quickness. They don't have size, so it's trouble once the opponent gets it up the court. And Auburn with their full court press, they can wreak havoc. Red Raiders stepping out of bounds. That was Keenan Evans turning it over to the Auburn Tigers. Up one with 12.35 to play. Kind of a frenetic pace here in the first half. Well, we haven't switched ends of the court. Uh, I, I think neither team has been able to get really running offensively the way they'd like. The, the two defenses doing a nice job slowing the opponents down and forcing them to play against the set defense. Harrell. Who buries the three right between the eyes of Justin Gray. And Auburn quickness once again forcing the turnover. And an offensive foul called on KC Ross Miller. Well, great job with Auburn's quickness of denying the inbounds pass. But then they found themselves, Ross Miller found himself trapped along the sideline trying to break through that pressure. A nice job stepping in to take that hit to get possession back for the Red Raiders. That is already seven fouls on Auburn. So Texas Tech will be shooting some free throws in the next 12 minutes. Wholesale substitutions. Tubby Smith took out all five guys, put five new ones in. Looks like the starting unit for Texas Tech. Tubby's been known to do that going back to his Kentucky days. If he's unhappy with some things, he'll just yank the whole five. <laughs> uh, didn't do a bad job, but get Odiasi and the rest of those starters back in there with Auburn a little shorthanded. Bowers in foul trouble. We'll see if the Red Raiders can stake themselves to a lead. 
off of an Auburn Tiger out of bounds. It'll be Texas Tech basketball when we come back. Tigers in the lead, 12-8, our score. Auburn leading Texas Tech 12 to 8 here in Lubbock, Texas. And for the Red Raiders, it all starts inside for the big man, Odiase. Lawrence Odiase has been the dominant force in this game with his rebounding and scoring down around the basket. He's forced several fouls on the Auburn Tigers to help Texas Tech get to the bonus. So despite the fact that Auburn leads 12 to 8, Texas Tech has a lot of advantages over the next 11 and a half minutes of this first half. And they've dominated the glass in the first half. 10 to 4 the advantage for Texas Tech. Odiase has got two of the rebounds thus far. Six points at times has just seemed unguardable for the Auburn Tigers. Especially now where you've got Simeon Bowers, their one true pivot man, saddled with two fouls already. With plenty of time to go in the first half. Red Raiders will inbound it with a fresh 35. The Tigers really relying on their quickness with Bowers in that foul trouble. The Auburn quickness will have to force those turnovers. If Texas Tech can take care of the basketball, they should get very good shots and have advantages going after offensive rebounds as well. Strong baseline move. Might have been blocked. Auburn looking to run. Shot to Dean. Pull up jumper is good. Excellent job with the outlet pass. Shamsa Dean, a good decision to pull up, knock down that jumper. And Auburn using their speed and quickness up by six. That's the largest lead for Bruce Pearl and company. Odiase. Shot clock is at five. Now two. And an offensive foul on Texas Tech. There's only one second left on the shot clock. Great defense by Auburn. Not sure about this one. Uh, my understanding is the offensive player should have room to land once he goes into the air. So that contact was made before the Texas Tech player hit the ground again. So great for the Tigers. Their quickness coming into play here. Harrell stripped and then a foul. Probably a good foul on Jordan Granger. Otherwise, Texas Tech would have had numbers the other way. Eight fouls, so a one and one upcoming. Quick hands to knock the basketball away. Robert Turner getting the steal. Anwasor ending up at the line. You commit that foul in the backcourt to prevent the, the run out for Texas Tech. But they're in the bonus already, so chance to score points without being guarded. Anwasor at the line. Anwasor of Nigerian descent. Made his way. To love it from Englewood, California. Slightly different atmosphere <laughs> from Englewood, Cali to Lubbock, Texas. From Nigeria. And from Englewood. Nigeria. He's pretty much seen a lot of the world yes, at this indeed. point. Same high school as Paul Pierce. Washington Wizards player these days. Knocks down a pair. They make it a four-point game. Two nifty footwork there for <laughs> Ross Miller. Ross Miller thought he kept that pivot foot down. The officials see it differently, but Auburn does get into their press. Look at that play by <laughs> Ross Miller, like a safety in football. <laughs> Harrell tried to feed inside, shops it deep, cleans up the loose ball. Kick out pass. Harrell takes it strong, bodies bump, no call. Sean Sadin gets it back, plenty of time to shoot. The basketball gets loose, and it seems like the quick Auburn Tigers able to come up with most of those, most with the basketball most of the time when it's 
a scramble play. Rejection by Texas Tech, another block. Inside, and a foul called before the slam. No basket and an offensive foul. It's another thing the Bruce Pearl teams do extremely well. They draw a lot of charges. Yeah, the quickness by these Auburn Tigers. Turner coming down, a beautiful feed to Odiase. But Turner doesn't, doesn't pull up to avoid that charge. So Auburn forcing another turnover. Eight turnovers now on Texas Tech. It's really been a problem for both teams' giveaways. A big concern for Tubby Smith coming into this game. He was talking about how Texas Tech had 18 turnovers against the Air Force Academy. The Air Force didn't press the way Auburn does. The Auburn quickness giving the Red Raiders a lot of trouble. And that is a game against Air Force. They actually trailed. Double digits with just a few minutes left to go. They had a great comeback, wound up winning the game. Devontae Williams had a big bucket in the closing seconds for the Red Raiders. Haven't heard much from Devontae Williams so far. A great three-point shooter for Texas Tech. Red Raiders slip into a zone defense, changing things up here against Auburn. In this zone without really anything to worry about on the interior for Auburn. That zone can really spread out. Ball tapped around and finally picked up by Williams. Screens all over the place for Texas Tech and then an out of control play there by Devontae Williams. We just talked about how he's been quiet. Maybe he's a little frustrated. Yeah, trying to trying to make something happen. Devontae Williams driving in. Jack Purchase able to stand in, take that hit. And yet another turnover for the Red Raiders on that offensive foul. Fifth foul for Texas Tech. They've now turned it over nine times. Side and a foul called on the Red Raiders. They got number 20. That's Todrick Gotcher. Nine fouls in 12 minutes. That is a 40 turnover pace. <laughs> That's not good. No, for anybody. <laughs> no. Harrell left Whoa. wide open. Whoa. Nothing but net. Hey, jumper Harrell. is pure. A.T. Harrell has knocked down a couple of jumpers. I thought he had left that one short. Game high nine points for the senior, the former Virginia Cavalier. And a foul away from the ball down low. That's on Jack Purchase. So free throws upcoming when we return. 7.45 to play from Lovett. Palmer, 17. Texas Tech 10. Let's meet our SEC Big 12 Challenge right now. The SEC has the upper hand. 17-10, Auburn in the lead. Don't forget Thursday on the SEC ESPN Network at 7 o'clock. SEC Film Room will be live in studio with a preview of this weekend's SEC Championship game. Then at 10, SEC in 60 eliminates the flub and brings you 60 minutes of pure football action. SEC Film Room and SEC in 60 Thursday at 7 o'clock and 10 on the SEC ESPN Network. I'm enjoying the SEC Network experience. I have too. a lot of fun. So far, very good. Been a tremendous football season and unparalleled coverage of SEC basketball this year as well, along with our partners. At ESPN, ESPN2, ESPNU. You folks are not going to miss a game this year. They turned the air over to us tonight. That's a right. questionable decision there. <laughs> it's still under review. Might, <laughs> might be too late to pull the plug, though. <laughs> Tigers working it around. Harrell finds a teammate up top, and there's another open three for the Tigers. TJ Lang, a freshman guard from Mobile. Son of Antonio Lang. Duke Blue Devil, 
the early 90s. They've got a couple of legacies. We might see Antoine Mason tonight, yeah. the son of Anthony Mason. One of my contemporaries, Anthony Mason, played Tennessee State in Nashville. Did you rough him up? Uh, no. <laughs> I didn't think so. <laughs> Red Raiders just can't find it from long range tonight. Another missed three-point shot. They're only 3 of 12 from the field and 0 of 4 from 3. And that has been the difference in this ballgame. Auburn with five made three-point shots on 11 attempts. And Texas Tech 0 for 4 from three-point range. The Auburn Tigers, 15 of their 20 points coming from distance. Odeyase back in the game for Texas Tech. 17 foul, so a one and one, and Auburn can't come through. A brick thrown up there by Waddell. 10 point lead for Auburn. They're doing most of this with their best post player, really their only post player, and Bowers on the bench with two fouls. The Tigers slip into the zone defense here. They are so quick in the <laughs> passing lanes. Reminds me of Tennessee with oh, Coach yeah. Pearl. Yeah, and it's a beautiful sight. Coach Pearl, his club looking a lot like those uh, double O decade balls. That's that's Auburn orange he had on there, not not Tennessee <laughs> orange, just to clarify. And you got KT Harrell looking like Chris Lofton tonight, knocking down jumpers. Shamson Dean on the run out, misses the finger roll, offensive rebound. Shot blocked from behind by who else? Odiase. Here come the Red Raiders. Foul and a block called. Two free throws upcoming for Texas Tech. What a great scoring opportunity for Devontae Williams. And Auburn scrapping on the offensive boards. Odiase swatting it away to start the fast break for the Red Raiders. Eight blocks on the year now for Odiase, who's just a freshman. He's an intimidating force. First free throw, too strong. Roasor, the sophomore from Inglewood. Checking in for the Red Raiders, Robert Turner, the senior. Texas Tech, ice cold, only 10 points in 14 minutes of play, and Anwasor unable to knock down the freebies. Another well, four of nine from the line. They're three of 12 from the field. Other than that, they're hitting everything. <laughs> well, they're getting to the lines. Yeah, that's an advantage. Nobody guarding you. You get to the foul line, get the score that way, but you got to knock them down. Well, they're getting good looks from the field, too. They're just not yeah. hitting them. Shamsuddin splits the double and a kickball. 15 on the shot clock. For the Raiders, number five, Odiase had the, had the basketball bounce off his foot earlier and start a fast break for Texas Tech. That time, the officials getting wise to that maneuver. <laughs> Great crew here tonight. Pat Adams, Rick Hartzell, Kip Kissinger. SEC crew working this Big 12 SEC champ. There's a steal, quick hands. Two on two, it's Turner, and Shops and Dean says, no, <laughs> I got all ball, Pat Adams. And that just looks impossible that you would oh, reach that far around the player and knock it away. Turner Woo. driving to the basket. Shops and Dean thinks that one was clean. I'd say he's got a case. Yeah. Well, the good news for Texas Tech, They've got free throws. The bad news is they haven't been making them. There we go. Robert Turner, 72% on the year. Checking in for Texas Tech. Clark Lammer. A great defensive performance by Auburn. So far tonight, they've limited Texas Tech. It is several times. It look, it's looked like te Texas Tech has had fast break opportunities, numbers, but they have, have not been able to score. No basket, offensive foul. Great job by Lambert to take the charge. Had his feet set before the offensive player left his feet. That's the rule. I thought the shot was well underway before the contact, but the charge wipes it off. 
I think it's a good call on the charge. I just thought the, the basket should have counted. It did go back to the rule from two years ago. It's no longer relevant whether or not the shooter is lifting the ball. It's all about where he takes off. Yeah, so it's going to be harder to get those three-point plays, those and ones this year. You really have to be in the act of shooting the basketball, not just lifting it, as was the case last year. We might set the record for charges in one half. There's another one. That one's on Robert Turner. Well, you have to play to what the officials are, are giving you, and uh, we've seen a lot of charges tonight, so keep setting up trying to take them, yeah. defenders. Yeah, I, I think they've been good calls. I mean, yeah. Yeah. got offensive players just making up their mind they're going to go to the hole without making adjustments. Yeah, charges. Last year, it was almost impossible to, to get a charge call. This year, a little adjustment in that rule. Uh, charges coming more frequently. Step back three short for Harrell. And almost another steal. Great job by T.J. Lang to get his hands in the passing lane. Or just do not float a pass against this Auburn Tiger defense. Here. You know, so quick looking for those opportunities to knock it away. What's amazing, Barry, is you and I watched Auburn the last couple of years. A lot of the same players are on the floor. They look like a completely different team. Yeah, it's not as much talent as was on hand last year for Auburn. At this point, they have a, a couple of players suffering with injuries right now. Uh, transfer that's, uh, that's going to be eligible here uh, shortly. They will improve even this year, but the talent level is going to rise, and these Tigers are going to be tough. Finally, Texas Tech buries a three. Now one of five. Todrick Gocher delivers, and it's a six-point game. And I'll say out of bounds to Auburn. Tigers might have caught a break on that one. No question about that. Canada ball bounced off his knee out of bounds, but... Auburn catching that break. Morrell. And sets up an open baseline jumper for Waddell, who buries it. It's an eight-point lead for Auburn. KT Morrell so good driving to the basket. He draws the defense in and is able to set up his teammates. And he's Morrell has hit jumpers tonight as well. So he is a very difficult matchup for Texas Tech. Oniase double teamed. Oniase determined to fire it. And he does. He's got eight points. 22 16. You know, if I had to work as hard to score as Odiase <laughs> does, I might have never scored, but he took his time on that one. Nice job. Morrell rims out, beautiful mid-air follow-up by T.J. Lang. He's a good-looking freshman. Rear offensive rebound for the Auburn Tigers. T.J. Lang getting the basket. He's knocked down a, a jumper and now getting that lay-in as well. Pace of this game, picking up a bit. Stolen away. Ahead of the pack. Breakaway, and there's the layup by Gocher. Good job by Devontae Williams passing that ball ahead to Gocher. Texas Tech getting the easy basket. Quick hands for the Red Raiders to get the steal and the layup. Canada sets it up with 10 to shoot. And lost it again. Got it back. Loose ball. A scrum. And a timeout called by Tubby Smith and Texas Tech. Malcolm Canada got a little sloppy with the basketball. And Texas Tech, another staple of a Tubby Smith team. They know how to play defense. You see the Auburn defender surrounding Odiasi. Three of them at one point. He didn't panic, let the defenders spread out a little bit, able to get that basket. Texas Tech getting the pick two, the steal, an easy lay-in. 
Texas Tech, picking up the pace of this game, picking up their scoring, trim the lead to six. Well, don't forget you can catch the top women's college basketball team in action Thursday on the SEC ESPN Network. Super freshman Asia Wilson leads number one South Carolina as they host the Charlotte 49ers in Columbia. Charlotte at South Carolina at 8 o'clock only on the SEC ESPN Network. Asia Williams, excuse me, Asia Wilson doing a tremendous job for Dawn Staley. By the way, that is the first time ever South yeah. Carolina has been number one in college basketball on the women's side, hometown product right there near Columbia. And she's 13 points, seven rebounds, an immediate impact. How about what Dawn Staley has done with that South Carolina women's basketball program? Has done a great job recruiting the East Coast, recruiting in her own backyard now as well. Dawn Staley has a Gamecocks at the top of the heap. Strong take to the basket by Gocher. He'll go to the line when we come back. Tubby Smith encouraged about the way his team is coming on. Bruce Pearl happy with a six-point lead. Sean, thank you so much. The story here, Auburn Tigers, despite the fact that their top post player, Simeon Bowers, saddled with two early fouls, leading Texas Tech on the road by six with a minute 44 to go in half number one. Texas Tech has done their damage inside. Norenz Odiase has been a beast outside. They've really struggled, but despite that, still a close game. Yeah, Texas Tech has dominated this game inside, and typically that leads to domination in general. But Auburn, with their quickness, they force a lot of turnovers. The Tigers have knocked down their perimeter shots, while Texas Tech has really struggled from the field. And Auburn, with a six-point lead, although they played most of this first half, without their big guy, Simeon Bowers. Auburn has forced 11 Texas Tech turnovers thus far in the first half as Gocher knocks it down. He's got six. And that man, you know he's just <laughs> chomping at the bit. I mean, the second half can't come soon enough for Simeon Bowers. He goes out with about 16 minutes to play in the half. And the Auburn Tigers still to manage a five-point lead here as we get to the latter stages of this first half. Shot clock at eight. Harrell in the lane, throws up a runner, can't get it. He was trying to hit it right in the face of Odiase. That would alter anybody's shot. That's the way KT Harrell scored most of his points last year, driving to the basket. Chris Denson was a great perimeter shooter for Auburn last year with Harrell doing a lot of his work inside. Harrell now able to knock down the three-point shots as well as get to the basket. He is going to be a tough matchup in the SEC this year. Pull-up jumper, no. Second chance. <laughs> Guess who? Like a bull in a china shot, but it works. Odiase has 10. Speaking of tough matchups, Norenz or Odiase powering his way up, continuing to dominate the backboards for the Red Raiders. You and I were talking before the game. He reminds us a little bit of a guy from Tennessee last year. Yeah, Jerron Maiman, one of Bruce Pearl's guys. Back a few years ago, he has... But he also has a, a little of that look about it. Red Raiders off and running. And a foul called. What did they say out of bounds? Bodies bumped. But they will not call foul. Just out of bounds with only 1.1 1 .1 on the clock. I mean, Tubby Smith, what do you draw up here? They got to look to the basket first. Look out for Odi Odiase rolling toward the rim. They foul the jump shooter with point one left. Oh my goodness, Bruce Pearl is going to have an ulcer with that play. <laughs> well, Todrick Gocher was incensed that he didn't get the shooting foul called as that ball flew out of bounds on his first trip down the court. But even better, he's fouled taking a three. As time expires in the first half, Todrick Gocher a chance to tie this game up at the half. Texas Tech 
finishing this first half strong. And they're actually going to check this on the old DB sports system, which you see in college football, used for replay. It's now used in college basketball as well. They used to use our television monitors. They kind of gone away with that. But I think they wanted to make sure there was whether or not he was fouled on a two or a three there. Exactly. Exactly. And he was clearly behind that three-point line. Gocher with a chance to tie this game up. Texas Tech only five for 11 from the foul line so far. Here's Gocher. Leading his case to Pat Adams saying, come on, you just bailed him out with that call. Well, he probably should have been at the line shooting two. That contact on his initial drive toward the basket. Gocher can make it a one-point game with his third and final free throw. He does. 24-23. That will be our halftime score. Defensive struggle here in half number one. Neither team giving an inch on the defensive end. 24-23 our score as we send it to Peter Burns with the SEC Network Halftime Report. Like to be a flop. It's the SEC Big 12 Challenge presented by Sonic. Our halftime score here in Lubbock, Texas. The Auburn Tigers 24 and the Red Raiders of Texas Tech 23. Mike Morgan alongside former Vanderbilt standout Barry Booker. Uh, one thing we know about both these coaches, Barry, is that they preach defense. Yes. And they got after it in the first 20 minutes <laughs> of this game, thus the low score. Yeah, both these teams doing a nice job making it difficult for their opponents to score. Although Texas Tech, they have had a lot of good opportunities to score, just unable to convert. One guy who did convert in that first half, their big man, Norenz Odiase. The big fella down low battling against Simeon Bowers for the Auburn Tigers, although that matchup didn't last very long with Bowers getting in foul trouble. Odiase doing great work inside. 10 points, three rebounds for Odiase in the first half. And for Auburn, they dominated from outside the three-point line. KT Harrell knocking down three three-point shots, nine points for him in the first half. Red Raiders with a positive finish to half number one, a 7-0 run before that. See, they got to the free throw line a bunch. They're a much more physical team, 8 of 16 from the line. They just couldn't hit open jump shots. If they do, that could spell trouble for Auburn. They only three perimeter points for Texas Tech in the first half. 19 of Auburn's 24 coming away from the basket. Now they have Simeon, Bow Simeon Bowers with only two fouls now. No longer in foul trouble as we begin the second half. And we'll see how this matchup of big men develops here in the second half with Bowers 5 in orange and 32 Odiase in black. Bowers played just five minutes in that first half, did not score a single point. He's averaging over 15 a game. First trip, an empty one for the Tigers as Harrell misfires. Harrell looked so good on his jumpers in the first half. That one not quite uh, the smooth release that he was showing in that first half. Didn't get that one home. Long rebound chased down by the Tigers. Inside it goes. Bowers missed it from close range. Doesn't miss many of those, but he got his own board. Nice hustle by the big man. Averaging 15 points, 13 rebounds coming into this game. No points, only one rebound with that foul trouble in the first half. And Bowers turns it over on a poor pass. See, five minutes, no points, two fouls for Bowers. And now two turnovers. Not a stellar night so far. At one point, he had four straight double-doubles this season. He's been a point and rebound machine for Auburn. 13 rebounds at the Auburn Arena record with 18 boards earlier this season. It has not been much of a factor tonight for the Tigers. Auburn going zone. Bruce Pearl doesn't normally do it. He said he'll have to do it tonight. <laughs> Quick hands by Ross Miller to take it away from Odiase. Nice D 
be by Devontae Williams to cut off the drive from Harrell. Force Auburn to recycle their offense as the shot clock gets down. Shot clock at three. Open look. Can't buy it. Zach Smith with a rebound. Nice pass by Bowers. Patient, not trying to make everything happen on that last trip through the through the pass of the open man. Tigers just couldn't get the jumper down. Pointless second half so far. Auburn settling in the zone. Texas Tech had a lot of trouble against Air Force's zone defense. So Auburn slipping into that zone. And that alley you pass a lot tougher against the zone. And that'll be Auburn basketball. Pretty tough to throw an alley-oop on a 2-3 zone. And Bowers did a nice job scrambling back to break up that pass inside. So, Simeon Bowers getting into the flow of this game. We'll see if he can become a little bit more pro productive as far as points and rebounds. Inside. It. Got poked away. Another turnover on Auburn. That's 10. Rebound Tigers. Auburn off and running. Got Bowers ahead of the pack. Instead goes to the corner and he stepped out of bounds. Shansid Dean was setting up for a wide open three, but his heel was on the line. And Bruce Pearl just got a warning. Auburn having a lot of trouble with the turnovers tonight. Got 12 on them. Bruce Pearl just got warned by the officiating crew to pipe it down. He was upset with that call at the end of the first half and didn't like that call here early in the second. Auburn settling again into the zone defense. The, the two big guys <laughs> battling each other. Odiase setting screens, and boy, do you feel those. Now he's got the post. He wants it. He's got it. And it's rejected out of bounds from behind. Bowers swats it away. Nice job by Jordan Granger holding his ground against Odiase. Once Odiase caught the basketball that deep, that's usually two points. Bowers able to come over and squat it away. That is about 550 pounds of beef going head to head <laughs> there with Odiase and Bowers. Three to shoot, Turner on a three. Offensive rebound. Putback is up and in by Zach Smith, the freshman from Plano, Texas. Zach Smith has been very active, especially here in the second half. Out of control, a turnover. Underway, slam for Justin Gray, and a timeout called by Auburn. When you get Justin Gray in the open court, that's the result to the easy way. Tech up three. Texas Tech up three, second annual SEC Big 12 Challenge. The first of ten matchups between these two premier conferences. Whoever wins this one, that'll make it 1-0 for their particular league. Tomorrow, you've got four matchups, including two ranked matchups. You've got LSU against 16th-ranked West Virginia. That'll be on ESPN2. 18th-ranked Arkansas. I had them earlier, Barry. They look good they this year. Good. With Coach oh. Anderson against Fred Hoiberg, the mayor in Iowa State. That is a heck of a game. 9 o'clock on ESPN2. Speaking of heck of a game, how about Texas, Kentucky, Florida, uh -oh. Kansas? My goodness. These two conferences have a lot to brag about in the Big 12. The nation's best record right now at 54 and 9. And the SEC last year had 12 NCAA tournament wins. That was the most of any conference at all. So a lot to brag for each conference. And one conference this year, after Saturday, will have bragging rights when this event has concluded. Love this matchup, the Big 12 SEC Challenge, 10 games. That is, uh, we're in the second year of a six-year contract. That is going to be a fun event. Oh, 
Auburn basketball, Texas Tech has been on a flurry here. That's another rejection for the Red Raiders, Justin Gray. And then a foul down low on Texas Tech. A great block coming over to swat that one away. Justin Gray, very active here in the second half so far. And his counterpart, number five in orange, Simeon Bowers coming up with that loose ball, trying to stick it back in. And winds up at the foul line, see if he can crack the scoring column. Five blocks for Texas Tech so far. They came in averaging 6.2. That's second best in the Big 12 Conference. You don't need to avert your eyes for Simeon Bowers' foul shooting technique, but you don't <laughs> want to copy it either. It's not pretty, and he's 54% on the year. A lot of different theories on why big men in particular struggle at the line. Big hands, perhaps. Unfluid motion. I, I don't know, but for whatever reason, it holds true. That is bad technique with that guy. <laughs> <laughs> so work on that. Leaner. <laughs> Good. Oh. Nice move by Robert Turner, the senior. Robert Turner having to jump over a defender on that leaner. Drain that short little shot. Nice move as Texas Tech has reeled off six quick points over the last minute of action. Turner, one of Tubby's first recruits. He started 38 consecutive games. Auburn once led this game by 10. They're down five. Yet to score here in the second half. there just no recognition by Ross Miller tech on a 6-0 run to start the second half <laughs> 29 24 Texas Tech meeting Auburn here at the ESPN SEC Big 12 challenge tonight at 11 p.m. on the SEC ESPN Network, you can join host Dari Noka and network analysts discussing all of the SEC news of the day on SEC Now, also available on Watch ESPN. I'm sure they'll be talking a little college football SEC championship game coming up. Yeah. Will it be Alabama or can Missouri pull off the upset? Surprising Missouri Tigers. Perpetual underdogs, but they just <laughs> keep on winning. Gary Pinkle getting it done. Back-to-back -back trips to the SEC championship game. Bruce Pearl, what a marvelous job he did at Tennessee. Led them to an Elite Eight, made it to the NCAA tournament every year. You see he's been to 17 NCAA tournaments in his 19 years as a head coach. Got his work cut out for him. He knows that. He was very upfront with us earlier today talking about what he's inherited. But he says, as Barry mentioned, he really loves his team. I tell you what he doesn't love, the 12-0 run that Texas Tech has been on going back to the end of the first half. That's travel. Out of control. Was a wassail. You see what Tennessee was before Bruce Pearl and then after. That's something he's done everywhere he's been. UW-Milwaukee, he made it to a sweet 16. That propelled him to the Tennessee job. And Division II Southern Indiana, he's got some national championship rings with that program. Well, he is so good with the X's and O's and with motivating his players, getting them to, to focus and to come together as one. He is a fantastic coach, never a doubt about that. And this Auburn program is on the rise. They are they're going to be an NCAA tourney contender next year. Morrell takes it strong with the left, and he'll go to the line for two. Going back to Pearl for a moment. Nice drive to the basket, KT Morrell. So good getting to the basket. Not able to get the shot down, but he gets to the line. See if Auburn can get their point, first points of the second half. You know, a few weeks ago, you and I were in Charlotte SEC Media Days, and you talked to people all around college basketball. He is great for the game, and he is such a perfect fit for the SEC. The SEC is better 
with Bruce Pearl coaching in this league. No question about that. This, this Auburn basketball program is going to become a force, and that will, that will encourage the Alabama program to, to step it up and others around the SEC to try and match what the Auburn Tigers are going to put on the floor here the next few years under Coach Pearl. Champs at Dean with the foul. Similarly with Tubby Smith at Texas Tech. He is building a nice program here in Lubbock. Well, the Big 12 had six coaches in this conference. Six of the ten have taken their teams to Final Fours. A, That's an amazing stat. <laughs> it is. Uh, Tubby Smith, a national title winner here in Lubbock now. And and just such a, a strong group of coaches with Bruce Weber at K-State. Rick Barnes took his team to the Final Four at Texas. Lon Kruger at Oklahoma. Bill Self, a national champion at Kansas. Bob Huggins at West Virginia. The, and the ones that haven't been the Final Fours are no slouches either. <laughs> Not chopped liver. How about this for a stat? Two coaches in the Big 12 now led SEC schools to a Final Four. Tubby Smith, as you mentioned, at Kentucky. But Lon Kruger yeah. did it at Florida. Nice tap in there for Auburn by Bowers. He has finally scratched. That's his first point of the night. It's a rebound there in the basket. Let's see if Bowers can, can get rolling here in the second half. Let's see he and Odiase really go at it here coming down the stretch. You hear Bowers from here yelling three seconds on Odiase. Turner off the screen for the big man. Fades, fires. Odiase beating Bowers to the basketball. 12 points for the freshman. Great hustle by Narent. Odiase. It looked like he was boxed out. Some guys would just give up there. Okay, my opponent has the inside position. Odiase chased after that basketball and able to get a basket. One of the best rebounders in the country. Simeon Bowers had his body on Lorenz Odiase, but Odiase kept working, spun around him, able to get to that basketball, and his hustle was rewarded. Great take to the basket by Harrell, the 6'4 senior guard. With, with Bowers on the court, a little more presence inside for Auburn so the defenders can't just come over and shut that drive down for Harrell, an easy bucket for him. Red Raiders weaving up top with 10 on the shot clock. Auburn just switching that weave. Harrell doing a nice job continuing to step forward, put that pressure on. That weave is designed to penetrate toward the basket. Turner did not get it off. Outstanding defense by the Auburn Tigers. Texas Tech comes into this game. They're four and one. They've only had one loss. That loss was to LSU in overtime in Baton Rouge. Nice start so far for the Red Raiders and Tubby Smith with seven newcomers on this ball. Harrell on the travel. The turnovers have been a problem for the Auburn Tigers. Up to 14 now. 14 turnovers on Auburn, 15 on Texas Tech. Part of the reason the score is so low in this ball game, those turnovers. Some solid defense, but some sloppy play. We'll see if one of these clubs can get it together coming down the stretch. That was a great take by Turner. He looked at KT Harrell and just said, I'm going to take you to the goal. Robert Turner playing a solid game tonight for the Red Raiders. Six points for Turner. His father was a veteran of Desert Storm. Came to Texas Tech after playing junior college ball in the state of New Mexico.
Auburn bleeding clock down to seven. Effective pass out of bounds. It'll be Auburn basketball with five to shoot. Please come back. Five point lead for the home team, the Red Raiders of Texas Tech. This is Tech leading Auburn 34 to 29. They've got some basketball tradition here in Lubbock. You see, not that long ago, three NCAA tournaments in a four year span 04, 05, 07. Of course, the man who led the way during that time, the General Bobby Knight. They hold a banner here in honor of his 900th win, the first ever Division I coach to reach that milestone. Of course, he did it while coaching, not Indiana, but Texas Tech. Bobby Knight's son would fall, not the same success, nor did they have great success under Billy Gillespie. That did not work out at all. So here's Tubby Smith taking over in a tight spot. But Tubby has won wherever he's gone. Tulsa, Sweet 16, Georgia, the same. Kentucky, a national championship, three tournaments at Minnesota. Playing at the buzzer, and the rebound of the Red Raiders. Nice board by Zach Smith going up high to snatch that board for Texas Tech. Red Raiders taking charge of this game. Now it's going over an 11 to 5 so far in the second half. Nice give and go. Rocher can't finish though. Good job by Malcolm Canada that time stepping over. Forced the difficult shot. Looked like it was going to be an easy lay-in opportunity for Texas Tech. Canada is right there in position to take the charge. This is Bowers going to work and a bump foul on Odeyase. Bowers has been waiting for that call this entire game. He finally got it. And it looked like he had great position inside. He, he sort of moved away from the basket on the catch unnecessarily. He's still able to draw the foul. Harrell. And a foul on Auburn. Tigers were so good from three-point range. They were five of 11 at one point in this game from three-point range. Five of 17 now. They missed their last six three-point attempts. Rebounds have been dominated by Texas Tech, 28 to 19. That's not too big of a surprise. That's what they do very well. That's the edge they have in this game down low. Shot clock at nine. We've seen that at both ends of the court, both teams getting deep into the shot clock. And with three seconds to shoot, a foul on Lane. That's a freshman mistake. You play great defense for 32 seconds. You don't want to bail him out there. Well, Tiger Gocher needing to make something happen there with the shot clock winding down and gets a fresh clock after the foul. Six points for Auburn in over 10 minutes of play here in the second half. The Tigers ice cold. Still playing tenacious defense. That's what's keeping them in it right now. And they're stuck on 29 points, and it's still only a five-point deficit. Bowers wheels and deals. Tapped around. Loose ball. And he's out of bounds. It'll be Auburn basketball. Lambert was sliding on his back. And the official right there to make the call. Seeing Simeon Bowers, five in orange, get a little more active for Auburn. And with Odiase on the sideline right now, he has a, an opportunity to help his team out. He wants it with Lambert guarding him. Too wild a shot, though. He muscled his way in and missed the shot. And then a foul on Canada in the backcourt. That's the fourth team foul. Bowers at the basket, and it looked like just a layup, but I think he got distracted with Lambert going to the floor. You start worrying about, you know, where am I going to land? 
going to break my neck here falling on this guy. And he got distracted by that. Missed the layup. Full court pressure broken by the Red Raiders. We near the nine minute mark. Texas Tech up five. Out of bounds to Texas Tech with 14 to shoot. Zach Smith had a size advantage inside posting up, but put it on the floor and the, the quick hands of these Auburn Tigers come into play when you put that ball on the deck. Shot clock under 10. And that's going to be another Auburn foul with the shot clock winding down. Lang, instead of just taking the screen or trying to go around it, pushed the screener yes. to the floor. It's an easy call. Everybody in the house saw that one, <laughs> including the three officials. So you pick up another foul, it's five. You give Texas Tech a fresh 35. Those are two possessions where you play great defense for 30 to 32 seconds, but you make a bonehead foul toward the end. This is going to be a turnover. And almost another one. Ross Miller almost gave it right back. He gets bailed out on a last-second foul. Well, the only good thing for Auburn, committing that foul with the shot clock down, they forced Texas Tech to play it in, side out of bounds, and that's where Auburn does great work, forcing another turnover. Ross Miller will end up at the foul line. As the Tigers laboring here in the second half. Six points so far in over 11 minutes of action, now seven points. The first point of the game for Ross Miller he is by far and away the best free throw shooter on the team. 95% coming in to tonight's action. Excuse me, it was 24 23 at halftime. Auburn leading, so Auburn now with six points so far here in the second half. And Gocher with an aggressive move to the hole draws the foul. He'll go to the line for two. It's kind of hard to make heads or tails out of this game, Barry. I mean, it, it, it's hard for either offense to get any kind of flow. Yeah. Both teams not shooting particularly well. We've had a lot of fouling. A lot of turnovers. A lot of turnovers. A lot of missed shots. Absolutely. <laughs> and so here we are. I mean, this is a score that you might see at halftime in most games. Yeah. We're down to 834, and we're still in the 30s. Yeah, the Auburn high-octane Bruce Pearl offense. You think, okay, we hold Texas Tech to 36 through 32 minutes of action almost. We're going to be up by 10. Instead, they're trailing by six, laboring here against these Red Raiders. Bowers imploring his team to give him the basketball. Lambert is just no match for him down low. and Odiase battling down low once again matched up against one another good job by Bowers using this quick feet to get around Odiase nice defense there by Shamsuddin and that'll take us to immediate timeout 36-32 our score SEC Big 12 challenge from Lubbock the SEC Network Basketball is brought to you by Sonics 399 Foot Long with Tots. Gats the top college basketball team in the nation on Sunday only on the SEC ESPN Network. It's an in-state showdown as the white-hot number one Kentucky Wildcats play host to Eastern Kentucky in Rupp Arena. That's Sunday at 6 on the SEC ESPN Network. With Barry Booker, I'm Mike Morgan. Hope you're enjoying yourself. We're coming to you live from Lubbock, Texas. Texas Tech and Auburn. As we take a look at tonight's good hands play, brought to you by the fine folks at Allstate. Lawrence Odiase battling against the Auburn Tigers inside, able to corral that, that uh, almost errant pass.
come up with it, stick it in the basket for our All-State Good Hands play of the game. Lorenz Odiase showing good hands, 12.6 rebounds, having a nice night for the Red Raiders. And a game that has featured a lot of turnovers, it's refreshing to see some good hands. Yes. I think we're going to be rewarded here with a strong finish, Mike Morgan. I can feel it. That'll help Auburn's cause right there. Again, the Tigers just down four. Smaller lineup on the court. KT Harrell needs to be aggressive here. Auburn misfiring on open shots here in the second half. The Tigers now five of 18 from distance. That is seven straight misses for the Auburn Tigers from three-point range, and Texas Tech hadn't found the range all night. One of nine, 11% from three-point range. Tigers, Harrell draws the foul. He is one of the better penetrating guards you'll find, KT Harrell. And talking to that young man before the game, as you watch this drive, you see he doesn't play 6'4", Barry. He plays no. more like about 6'7". <laughs> he's, he's got a hard shot to block. He knows how to use his body. And one of the things he told us today, a guy that's really helped, is an assistant coach that Bruce Pearl has, a former SEC legend, Chuck Person. Says he's learned a lot from Chuck, listens to Chuck every opportunity to learn more about the game. He knows Chuck has been there. There you see Chuck to the left of Bruce Pearl, the rifleman. Boy, oh. was he a lot of fun to watch. <laughs> Unless you're playing on the other team. He came up to me today and said, <laughs> man, I see you, and I, I feel like I can still score. <laughs> but you guard me. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably still good for about 20 on no. a good night. You don't think so? Oh, he absolutely, I think so. He could absolutely <laughs> fill it up. Saw him go for 40 at Memorial Gym in Nashville without a three-point line mm. his senior year. One of the great shooting performances I've ever seen. Both he and his brother Wesley, each 2,000-point scorers at Auburn. <laughs> Turner with eight to shoot. Now three. Gocher. <laughs> and with one second left on the shot clock. I've never seen anything like this now. Auburn continually plays great defense for 30 to 34 seconds and then commits a foul. And it, it's unfathomable. They <laughs> Great job defensively. Texas Tech desperate with the shot clock working against them. They drive to the basket. And uh, Texas Tech a little more experienced than these Auburn Tigers. Gocher, that's at least the second time that he's been in that situation with the clock working against him, and he's been able to get to the foul line. He's got 11. I like your choice of words. Desperate. That's what those, sh those shots have basically been, but Auburn is giving them a reprieve each time. Four-point game as we near the six-minute mark. Take to the hole. High off the window and in for Ross Miller. What do you say, partner? First one to 40 wins? I don't know if Auburn can get there. <laughs> <laughs> That's now 11 points for them and over 14 minutes of action here in the second half. But still, only down by two. It's an opportunity to steal a win here on the road at Texas Tech. Pass. Anwasor tried to rifle it to Odiase, but he really wasn't ready for it. Wide of the mark as well, so a break for Auburn, who can tie or even take the lead with a three. Well, solid defense at both ends by these teams. That's part of why we've had the slower pace. These two teams have, have done a nice job of slowing down the opposition. Second opportunity off the offensive rebound. Harrell working the paint. 
Look at that move. That's a guard getting dirty in the lane. And we are tied at 37-15 for Harrell. And Harrell so good scoring around the basket. The Tigers spread the court that time, opened things up, allowed him room to post. And Harrell getting in there where he's very comfortable. Those guard defenders that are contesting against him usually aren't comfortable playing post defense. Harrell gets the basket. That's a foul on Auburn. Ross Miller again away from the basket. Four Auburn players out away from the basket, allowing Harrell room to operate inside that soft jump hook. You don't see very many guards with that ability to score in the post the way KT Harrell came. Kind of an interesting number here. Every Auburn player right now that has gotten in this game tonight, all of them playing with two fouls after the last one. And Smith triggers and missed it. Front end of a one and one. Zach Smith can't convert from the line. Auburn with a chance to take the lead. Morell walked, but not keep his pivot foot on the floor. It's a nicely designed play for pick and roll with him and Bowers. Bruce Pearl the just jacket. took off the jacket. <laughs> There's a first look at the suspenders. <laughs> A good move by Harrell getting to the basket. A better job defensively by Lorenz Odiase. Cut off the driving lane and forced the travel. If only we could get Bruce Pearl to coach with a little passion. Yeah. Loosen up. Block foul. Called on Waddell. Waddell, who's a walk-on and an engineering major. The Auburn full court pressure defense, unable to force the turnover in the back court. Texas Tech takes advantage, pushes it down the court. Robert Turner, another nice drive by him, and he gets to the line again. Bruce selecting to put the jacket back on. It is a little, little nippy in here, Barry. It is. You and I have kept our jackets on throughout. <laughs> and again, we're both a little calmer than Bruce Pearl. <laughs> a, a lot less active. <laughs> Turner trying to bury a pair. And a second rims out. Seven points for Turner. One point lead for Texas Tech as we near the four minute mark. Four foul shooting by both clubs. Stepped out of bounds. Great defense by Williams. Just and stepped on the baseline. We're coming down to the wire here in Lubbock. First game of the SEC Big 12 Challenge. Texas Tech up by one. 55 to play here in Lubbock, Texas. And don't forget to catch the top women's college basketball team in action Thursday night on the SEC ESPN Network. Super freshman Asia Wilson leads number one South Carolina as they play host to the Charlotte 49ers in Columbia at Charlotte at South Carolina at 8 o'clock only on the SEC ESPN Network. Mike Morgan, Barry Booker, game number one of the SEC Big 12 Challenge. Four games coming at you tomorrow. They'll wrap this, this uh, tournament up on Saturday. It's the second annual SEC Big 12 Challenge. Last year it was won by the Big 12, 7-3. to three. Somebody will be up 1-0. After the final three minutes and 55 seconds of this game. And obviously we can go either way here. One point game. Coming down the stretch. The first meeting between these two schools since 1963. But two coaches familiar with one another. Back when Pearl was at Tennessee and Tubby was at Kentucky. Bowers gets it in the lane. Takes it strong. Rejected. But Auburn gets it back with 15 on the shot block. Zach Smith, nice block shot. Open three. Got it! Jordan Granger, who's been burying threes left and right this year. The junior has six, and Auburn is up two. And the Tigers forcing Texas Tech to call timeout. What did we talk about, Barry Booker? Nobody's teams play better defense on inbounds passes than one Bruce Pearl. 
Oh, they are fantastic on inbounds passes. Another thing I remember about the Bruce Pearl Tennessee Vols is that they close like nobody's business. Close games, the last five minutes, Tennessee would pull out virtually all of those games, and Auburn knocking down that three-point shot after missing their last seven, getting that three home to get the two-point edge. Auburn getting some momentum back now. What do you see the keys for each team down the final 332? Uh, just taking care of the basketball, not committing those silly fouls to give the opponent those easy opportunities to score. We'll see if we can get this kind of offense cranked up again. It's been quiet for both teams on offense. Tenacious defense from both sides. Who's going to be able to hit clutch shots down the stretch for each squad? That's what makes college basketball so great no matter what time of year you're in. A good matchup here in early December. Texas Tech, how about that for a number? Talk about ice cold. Zero field goals made in the last eight minutes and 20 seconds. Auburn struggling so badly here in the second half. Texas Tech with some opportunities to put some distance between themselves and the Auburn Tigers. Auburn able to hang around and here these last few minutes put a few points on the board. Inside it comes and an easy bucket down low. You've got no Bowers on the floor. And for Odiasi, that's like taking candy away from a baby. <laughs> yes, indeed. The hot sign is off. Odiasi doing work down around the basket against these undersized Auburn Tigers trying to contend with him. It's our fifth tie of the night. Under three to play. Hanging, firing, and hitting is the senior K.T. Harrell from Montgomery, Alabama, with 17 now. And with Bowers off the court, K.T. Harrell, the number one scoring option for Auburn. He is aggressive getting to the basket, getting Auburn that two-point lead once again. Williams has been quiet tonight. Second best three-point shooter in the country. Still looking to fire one off. On the handle with seven to shoot. Lob pass down low and a foul. I believe they've got 31. Devin Waddell. Odiase didn't appreciate the, the contact from KC Ross Miller after that play was over. Well, they just buy a couple of minutes there for Bowers to catch his breath, but he's coming back in. Is Odiase getting that lob pass inside, and Ross Miller comes over a little more physical <laughs> than Odiase would have would have liked. Odiase just plays mad. <laughs> like little fella, <laughs> will squash you. Don't mess with me. When we talked to Tubby Smith about Odiase. He was not that highly recruited because he was simply overweight in high school. He weighed over 290 pounds, but they have a nutritionist here on staff. He's already dropped 25, and the big man moves quite well as he sinks the second to make it a one-point game. He's got 15. Odiase has developed into an excellent inside player, a force down low for Texas Tech. Harrell misses it. Texas Tech saves it. There's Robert Turner falling to the floor, able to come up with a basketball. You, legally, you can slide on the court, and it's not a travel. I thought he might hit the sideline, but Turner able to stay in bounds, kept his composure, able to find the teammate, and save that possession for Texas Tech. 90 seconds left in the game, a one-point affair. Turner. Now three to shoot, and another late foul with under five on the shot clock. Champs it, Dean, my goodness. Bruce per Pearl is going to have a coronary by the time this night is over. Will they learn? Shot clock down, Texas Tech. Oh, desperation. we got to drive to the basket, make something happen. And once again, Champs Dean reaching in, a veteran player for the Auburn Tigers reaching in, committing that foul. The sophomore guard played a ton, though, last year. But here's the situation for Texas Tech. They've got on the line 28 times. They've missed half of them, 14 of 28. They have had so many opportunities in this game to have more points on the board. 
And they have let Auburn hang in there, and the Tigers a chance to take this game. Timeout called by Tubby Smith. That'll leave the Red Raiders with two, the Tigers with three. A minute 24 to play. 42-42 our score. First game of the second annual SEC Big 12 Challenge. The competition will heat up tomorrow. Look at some of the matchups tomorrow and Friday. LSU, West Virginia, Arkansas, and Iowa State, a top 20 affair on ESPN2. How about sixth ranked Kentucky? Excuse me, sixth ranked Texas and number one Kentucky. That's a top 10 matchup on ESPN. Florida versus Kansas, Missouri, Oklahoma. A lot of good games coming up in this event. Ten games in this event. This is the first. Those five there involving ranked opponents that are on the ESPN family of networks. Pat Adams giving us that explanation that uh, that, that slide is legal. That's not a travel. Uh, that play that Texas Tech had a few moments ago as we get down to the last few seconds of this close ball game. Brown on its feet here in Lubbock. Correll or Bowers where Auburn wants to go here as the shot clock is at 10. Shamsuddin Dean takes it strong. Got it to go with the left hand in heavy traffic. Wow. <laughs> Now the press for Auburn. Tigers a two-point lead. It would help Texas Tech if they could attack quickly here, get two possessions. And a touch foul by Ross Miller. 25 feet from the basket, and that'll send Texas Tech back to the line. With the shot clock winding down, Taj Shamsadeen in all kinds of traffic. The little man able to battle through that traffic, knock down that leaner. Only 5'9", but going in among the trees to get two big points for Auburn. Devontae Williams, who's been extremely quiet tonight, 81% free throw shooter. He's obviously big foul shots here, but second differential between shot clock and game clock so Texas Tech guaranteed another possession here tie ball game look for KT Harrell to end up with the basketball coming off a screen heading to his right toward the basket when this shot clock gets down a little lower Harrell block from behind Picked up by Texas Tech. They can play for the final shot. And a timeout, I believe, Just called by Tubby Smith before the turnover. Just in time. A collective sigh of relief <laughs> from the crowd. Bruce Pearl can't believe it. He wanted the foul on the other end. A.T. Harrell did drive it to the basket, able to get to the rim, but at only 6-4, the size of Texas Tech able to take away the scoring opportunity, and now the Red Raiders. It looked like they had a numbers advantage in that scramble court situation. That ball went flying out of bounds just as the whistle blew to signal Tubby Smith's timeout. Texas Tech is in the double bonus. The last thing you want to do if you're Auburn right now is foul, which they've been doing plenty of in this half. You can't do it. You simply got to play honest, straight-up defense for the final nine and a half. It seems like every time the clock has worked down, including the end of the first half, Auburn fouled a Texas Tech three-point shooter with .1 seconds left on the clock in the first half. And so many times as the shot clock has wound down here in the second half, the Tigers have committed a foul to give Texas Tech foul shots or another possession. Red Raiders left with one timeout here. So as you're chalking this one up, Barry Booker, you've got plenty of time. You're already in the front court. You don't have to rush a shot here. Who are you looking for if you're the Red Raiders? Well, the first challenge, though, is just getting the ball in bounds against this Auburn defense. That has been a problem so frequently for Texas Tech. 
And then after that, it's 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 been the big man inside. Norenz Odiase has been the guy for Texas Tech as the officials are checking the checking the clock situation. It should be a little bit more than 9.5 seconds left on the clock. We're going to 10. Job number one here for Texas Tech is simply get the ball in bounds. Both these programs have gone on hard times here lately. Both coaches talking about the importance of games like this to rebuild, to get confidence, to gear up for conference play. It's one building block after another. So now you have 10 seconds left, a tie game. Someone's going to come away with some motivation and something to build on. Somebody, on the other hand, is going to be <laughs> devastated after this one. Yeah, so disappointed. Both these teams have had so many missed opportunities, uh, so many things that they wish they could do over again. And now Texas Tech, a chance to take the final shot of the ball game and have overtime at worst here. Ball in the hands of Williams. He's their best three-point shooter. Driving, spinning, firing, got it! With 2.2. Good if it goes. Off the rim, and Auburn falls 46 to 44. The only field goal of the game for Devontae Williams. Clock situation worked so well for Texas Tech. They get that, that foul with 41 seconds left, forcing Auburn to take a shot and give Texas Tech the last possession of the game. Devontae Williams driving to the basket, his only basket of the night, able to get that shot down. A pretty good look, considering only 2.2 seconds left for Auburn and Todd Shamsadeen. The leaner just wouldn't fall for him. Texas Tech, a hard-fought win. Disappointment for the Auburn Tigers. Entertaining one here to tip off the SEC Big 12 Challenge. This is the first. Nine more to go. Once again, your final score, Texas Tech 46. The Auburn Tigers 44. The Big 12 takes the early 1-0 lead. Coming up next, we'll get you back to the studio. For now, for Barry Booker, this is Mike Morgan saying so long from Lubbock, Texas. Now let's send it to Peter Burns in the SEC studio.